Yeah, yeah. it can't be marriage at all costs. Yeah. It has to be marriage with the one that's suitable for marriage. Yeah. And so some people love marriage so much, they choose wrong because they rather be um, married. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop. Are you ready? We're gonna run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just want it need all. Do you know what it's like? Every day facing your fear, but believing that your blessing is near. Do you know what it's like? Growing up broken than most, but still being devoted the most. Do you know what it's like? Yeah, that's what the journey's about. Yeah. Let me show you What's going on, everybody? This is Justin Owens. We're back with the Run to Play Show, where we help break down the top plays of success from top leaders, entrepreneurs, and personalities by sharing gems from their personal playbook. And man, I'm honored. I'm excited today. This is a uh, a legend, literally one of the best speakers that I know, um, an expert when it comes to uh, to leadership, and uh, just a, just an incredible, incredible person. You, you're gonna love him when you get a chance to dive into the information tonight, but. Uh, Dr. Darius Daniels. What's up, my guy? Welcome to the show, man. man Thank you, bro. I'm excited to be here, man. Love yeah. it. I'm glad you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? We've been talking about it for a while. For sure. I know you've been together. Been, got the, the facility going, <laughs> and, you know, just been traveling. So i um, just glad you could take the time out and get with us, man. Man, listen, uh, you know, we we kind of swim in the same stream. We yeah. both personal development and leadership yeah. junkies, man. So it's it's always great when I can get some time to yeah. just... Just talk a little bit. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, because a lot of times people may know you more, like, on the spiritual side. But, yeah. like, I, I'm like, listen, there are some people that, you know, that's their lifestyle. Um, but you you have an actual running business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Like, there's some people yeah, that's like, yeah. okay, they got to live off the yeah, donation. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. like, no. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he looked different. He looked oh, yeah. different. He yeah, looked different. I, I give more than I make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, and and it's evident, man. It's evident mm -hmm. from the people you're around. Got a chance to uh, speak to your mastermind group and yeah. even seeing the facility. I'm like, oh man, this is this is different. <laughs> this is entirely different. So I just want to say, first of all, uh, congratulations to you on everything you've done. Thanks, and, man. You know, you continue to pour in and pour back. And you know, even like uh, the stuff we do with Circle of CEOs and some of my friends, like you always show up. Yeah. Like, and, yeah, and it's not a lot of people that I would say. You know, like the the pre the the generation that came before you. A lot of times, people don't come back and like help and give yeah. advice. Yeah. Or even support. Sure. And so, like, anytime we see that, like, man, this, this is a different, this is a different guy right now. So I just, I just want y'all to know, anybody that sees him from afar is like, he's the same person. <laughs> literally, as you see on Instagram, you see yeah. him on YouTube, you see him in ministry, is literally the same stuff. So I just oh, wanted to say that to you, man. Thank I really you, bro. Appreciate I appreciate you, it, man. And uh, and uh, I, I guess I think right now relationships are something that's really big, and, and you know, you and, and Shamika have an incredible uh, relationship. How 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 important do you feel like it is having that? has helped you or having a great relationship has helped you in, in business and in your other areas in life? Man, um, for me, it's probably it's probably one of the most important things. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you why, like really practically, okay. you know, just like really practically. So it's for me, it's been one of the most important things is this, because um, having a relationship that is not rocky right. allows me to give mental real estate to the business I'm, the businesses I'm leading, right. and the people that I'm serving. Yeah, you understand. Mm -hmm. So I'm not having to uh, balance in my mind fixing my relationship yeah. and fixing what's going on in the company. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, it's, it's different. yeah, it is. Yeah. So um, the the relationship is almost like provides provides me with a um, a steady foundation yeah. that I can kind of stand up on um, while I'm trying to build these other things. Mm -hmm. And man, it also becomes like a like a safe place, yeah. Where it's re it's replenishing, it's re it's refreshing, yeah. It's um, rejuvenating, reinvigorating, yeah. Because a leader must be a problem solver. So when <laughs> so That's a fact. you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're gonna be a leader, you gotta solve problems. So you gotta wake up every day knowing I gotta solve some problems today. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't want to come back home to another one. Mm. Y'all hearing this? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Um, that's I feel like that's one of the reasons. Two, and I'm not saying this is everybody's this is everybody's scenario, but two, my wife is just incredibly gifted. Yeah. So she actually adds value to what we're doing. So if we were to use like some of the EOS language, I'm the visionary. 
Yeah. I'm the, the visionary, the creative. Mm -hmm. She's the integrator. Yeah. Yeah. I am. This is where we're going. Mm -hmm. She is, okay, we need a train, plane, automobile to yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to go find it. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's kind of those, those, those two places. Those yeah. Two and I remember because when you were building a facility, you was like, I don't even know really. <laughs> all that. Like I don't get in all deep. Like she's like she's just handling that. He's like I, I remember you saying like she even helped save money in some areas and just I mean I was like that's, that's unique because not every wife is trying to save money. Yeah, you know, some, <laughs> some are some are trying to you know spend as much. So it's you know um, as the Bible says, the man finds a good wife has found a good thing. Yeah, you know so that's that's uh, that's great. What would you say to somebody that's like all right because like I I think we talked about this. I used to be married. I was married for almost eleven years, right? Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, not anymore. You know, and she's an incredible person. Yeah, just didn't work out, right? Sure. What would be some steps for that next chapter? You know, like you like okay, um, you want to have a you know steady relationship, business mindset, trying to find that person. What are some things that you would you would uh, encourage somebody that's in that spot? That's uh, that's considering marriage. Yeah, considering yeah. marriage. Yeah. So. It's gonna, it's gonna be really important. I think you mentioned something. I'm, I'm gonna give an example that has nothing to do with marriage. Okay. And then I'm gonna circle back and I'm gonna do it do it quick. So you know how you mentioned earlier, I kind of got my feet in two worlds, right? Yeah. Kind of like the spiritual space and then yep. the business space. Mm -hmm. Well, having my foot in the business space allows me to serve the spiritual space better. Got it. Okay. And it's Talk because I don't have the pressure of the spiritual space spiritual space succeeding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It's not necessarily. It's not how I feed my family. Yeah. It is. So. Um, I'm able to be, I'm able to have some non-negotiables. I'm able to, re it's easier for me to, to stick with a standard <laughs> because yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not playing games. I don't yeah. have to play games. I'm not going to manipulate you. I don't have to manipulate you. Yeah. And that's not just because hopefully that, hopefully a lot of it has to do with character, but it also has to do with just the way I've been able to position myself because my business is stable. And so that way my financial suit future secure yep. right because when you get desperate it's easy to lose integrity it is yeah Sheesh. so the non-negotiables i guess is what i'm getting at so i would say taking that same analogy i don't know how a person can make the right decision even when it comes to that marriage thing if you already aren't clear on what your non-negotiables are yeah. yeah yeah it can't be marriage at all costs yeah. it has to be marriage with the one that's suitable for marriage yeah and so some people love marriage so much they choose wrong because they rather be um, married. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Cause, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a new show. I don't want to, yeah. but you, you know, you read what I'm writing. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to stir up controversy, but it is possible to be in love with the idea of marriage so much so that that love blinds you to the fact that you've married somebody that's not suitable for you. Yeah. So there's gotta be a standard that says, okay, yeah, I want marriage but not at all cost. I like that. Yeah. yeah. What, what have you found some, like, uh, some, some, because from a leadership standpoint, one of the things I believe is really big is communication, right? It's just, you know, super important. It goes into relationships, all of them. Yeah. What are some tips or things that have worked for you to communicate when stakes are high or emotions are high yeah. or stress is high? A hundred percent. So um, I think what you're really talking about at its core and in situations like that is fear. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I don't if, if someone were asking me that I would be like, yo, stakes are high. It's going to be a little fear, a little anxiety there because mm -hmm. the decision that you make is consequential. I say this. Yeah. Every decision is pregnant with the potential to produce a season. Sometimes we live wow. through a whole we, we make one decision. Mm -hmm. It produces a whole season. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the point that I'm making is what what pops up when we got to make those consequential decisions is fear. And I don't know how to tell somebody to fix fear. What I do is this, I replace, I know how to remove fear, but I replace fear. I replace an inferior fear with a superior fear. Okay. So some people are like, oh, I'm scared to make a decision because it's a wrong decision. Yeah. I'm like, I'm scared not to make a decision. Yeah. So it's replacing this inferior fear with this superior fear. So like when the stakes are high, there's one part of my mind that's saying, you know, what happens if I, if I do and it goes wrong? Other side of saying, what happens if I don't? And it could have went right. Right. That's 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 yeah. That's not that's not the thought process most people have all the time. It's always on the fear based side, mm -hmm. and it's like, no. Nah, what what happens if you had that conversation and things get better? Yeah. And things get improve, um, and you find solutions. I, I know for a lot of entrepreneurs and business people, really, just I think a lot of people in life, it's finding that rhythm 
once I get the relationship, I have the family, I'm traveling, I've got the business. Uh, are there any things that have helped you have a nice rhythm with that? You got ministry in there too, because now you got to serve. Yeah. And yeah. you got your your community that you yes. got to serve. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so and everybody wants something. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, what I'm thinking, so it's, it's a two part question. It's like, what do you do to have a rhythm in those areas? And then is there anything you do to fill yourself up? Because when you're continuous, continuously pouring into people, you got to have time for yourself, too. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to, I'm not going to say I hate it, but it kind of, it kind of rubs me the wrong way mm -hmm. when um, people only tell you one side of the story, right? Yeah. And so for me, I would say that I feel like there are certain seasons where I'm better or in a better rhythm than others. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you what I mean. Um, I call it's, it's like what I call uh, this principle: more of anything means more of everything. So you don't get more of one thing without getting more of another. So for example, uh, you get more clients, more pressure, yep. more responsibility, mm -hmm. more demands. Yep. Somebody that's in the workspace, you get a promotion. It's not just more promotion; it's more pressure. Yeah, it's more responsibility. It's you know what I mean? More notoriety more haters. You don't get <laughs> yeah, one without the other. So it's kind of this, this, uh, this, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, what I call the backside of the blessing. And so even when things are going well, like blessings are disruptive, man. Yeah. Business explode, whatever rhythm you thought you had. It disrupts. It's totally different, bro. Yeah. yeah. It, it, dis, it yeah. disrupts this yeah. thing. You got, you got a beautiful daughter. Yeah. Thank you. One of the most I'm sure the most important thing to you in the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But when she came into your life, it disrupted your rhythm. Yeah, everything. It probably disrupted your sleep. Yeah. You know, you like, let's, let's <laughs> yeah. go to the mall. It's like, yeah. wait, I can't go to, you know. Yeah. So it's it's disruptive. And so for me, what I found is rhythm is seasonal. So yeah. nobody does it perfectly. You just got to be able to adjust quickly. Got it. And uh, so that, you know, some seasons I'm better at it than others. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. And what about recharging? Like anything you do to recharge yourself? Yeah. To get your energy back? I do, man. It's uh, I think people need a couple of things. So one, you need what I call replenishment disciplines. Okay. That's what's the thing you go to that actually refills you in the area that you're pouring out in. Got it. So for me, it's content. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so that means I got to have disciplines to refuel and to replenish me which is part of the reason I'm in certain masterminds. Yeah. I'm not learning everything at every master, stuff at every mastermind that's like game changing yeah. all yeah, the time, right? Sure. But it is a replenishment discipline yep. for me. Reading is that. And so, um, you know, connecting with people mm -hmm. like yourself, you know, yeah. we've lunch, breakfast, whatever. Yeah. So that's one. So I think you need, you need that. You need some sort of recreation. Okay, yep. And for me, that's video games. <laughs> really? Just, oh. Okay, I didn't expect that. What'd you play? I know everybody. Everybody <laughs> expects this. No, yeah. I'm like a, I'm like a gamer, gamer, bro. Yeah. I got so I play Xbox. Okay. I got a Nintendo Switch for the handheld. Mm -hmm. Now I just got into PC gaming. What? So I got. So I got okay. There we go. Yeah. So I'd rather be doing that than playing golf for eight hours. Yeah. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? What's your favorite game? Uh, 2K. Okay, it's only 2K. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so. You gotta get his gamer tag. 2K, K, Call of Duty. Game. You know. Okay. You know, so, but everybody's kind of got to, everybody's got to find that thing. And then I just think you need uh, disciplines of rest. Rest should not be a response to fatigue. Rest should be a response to accomplishment. Wow. It's a, dis right? It's a discipline. That's it's not, true. I'm going to just rest because I'm tired. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm going to rest because I've accomplished something. Yeah. And rest is not in the way of my productivity. Mm -hmm. It's going to make me more productive. Because yeah. when I'm tapped in, I can do more in three hours than I can in three days when I'm tapped out. Yeah, that's for sure. So we got replenishment, mm -hmm. recreation. Uh, recreation, and rest. Yeah. I like that. Rest is my favorite one. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. I, I just When you've been doing a lot, you can just, I'll just lay back. Just, just I will down, nap you know. on you in a <laughs> minute. <bro. laughs> I can be a nice little 15, 20 minute nap but anyway, it'd be yeah, back. Yeah, be like, yeah. yes, I'm back. No, I, I love that. Because, you know, man, for me, it was um, in business, I was fortunate. Like, I actually, I met you through my mentor. You spoke mm -hmm. at this event, and that's why I was like, oh, this, oh, he yeah. go. Right? We got to yeah. make sure we connect. And then I found out, you know, we, we didn't live too far from each other. Yeah. But it was what I thought success had to look like was the, you know, because sometimes you watch stuff online, you like, you think of people just going, going, going mm -hmm. all day. And I'm like, Okay, I did that for a long time, and it's yeah. like, no, you, we go. Sure. 
but we do it in spurts and then we then we rest and mm-hmm. then we do another spurts and because you know like even like we were kind of talking before, like right before we got on is like now when you're going into launching something new it's there's a whole different energy it's the energy has to come from a different place <laughs> you know what i'm saying like because <laughs> yes you know i think there's a certain energy that comes from all right i gotta make it i gotta make it happen yeah and then when when that's not there it's like okay all right, I, this this has to be about something else. Yeah, it has to be. It has to come from a different place, and uh, and I think rest is really important for that because it also rest for me helps me think too. Like when I my mind get clear, exactly. ideas come, and then I can go out there and I can yeah, execute on facts. it. So I love that. No, I love I'm definitely that. I'm definitely the same way. Yeah. Definitely the same way. Um, reading because you're you're like the the stuff that I hear you come out I'm like this brother is in his book all the time. Like as a matter of fact, I text you about this. I'm like listen. How do you like? What is your process for like studying? Whether it's leadership, Bible, like how do you how do how do you find a rhythm for even personal growth and self development? Because for me that was a challenge. Like sometimes I go real hard on yeah, you know, just in, in the Word and yeah. Bible, and then sometimes just all right, you know what? <laughs> Let me just learn these skills. Let me just dive into this. Have, have you found a rhythm with that, or something that helps you to? I have found a rhythm with that. Okay. I, I have, okay. and I've like I've had pretty. I mean, I've tweaked it, but I've had. Uh, the same rhythm for a long time, over a decade. Wow. You know, for the most part. Yeah. Now, you're about to be disappointed, though, because it's not <laughs> impressive. Yeah. It is not impressive. Like, yo, I could take you to my house right now and take you downstairs in my basement, and you probably think I got, like, walls and walls and walls of bookshelves, mm-hmm. uh, with books on shelves. Mm-hmm. One time I had somebody over my house that was in my office, and they looked, they was like, what are the rest of your books? Because I know these are not all your books. I said, yeah, these are all my books. They were like, what? I was like, yeah, the difference between me and a lot of other people, though, is I read them all. Mm. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, I read, it, but I'm about to share with, which is what I share with you. The way that I read is different. I got a discipline for retaining. So most people, a lot of people, probably in my space, read way more than me. Mm-hmm. But I have a discipline for retaining, and so they may read more, but I feel like I probably get more from what I read, even though I read less. Hmm. So it sounds like I know more. Yeah, because I'm retaining more. <laughs> so yeah. I probably read on an average morning. 30 minutes a day. Wow. Some the average person probably thinking hour. Yeah, that's no. like an hour two. Yeah. No way. Two? Absolutely not. No. 30 minutes a day. Here's the difference. Here's what I do. One, because of the number of things that I do, I have to have information in a number of different areas. Right. So I have a regiment where if I can read a little bit in the areas that are key and critical to me in terms of the season of life that I'm in, mm-hmm. a little bit done consistently compounds over time. Right. It's the compound effect. Mm-hmm. So me doing that little bit, so what? The Bible's going to be in there because I want to ground myself spiritually. Yeah. Something with marriage or parenting is going to be in there because mm-hmm. that's my next top priority, right? Then something with leadership is going to be in there because right. I'm leading all these, well, leading these organizations. And then something as it relates to something to do with the business I'm in, whether it's a business book or not, yeah. that's got to be in there too. Mm-hmm. So what I'm doing is I literally set a timer on my iPhone, I, well, I just use the stopwatch, mm-hmm. and I commit five minutes to each of those areas. Wow, I'm about to start that. Five minutes to each of those areas, and I've a do- I've got a document, um, I use Google Docs, and so every book that I'm reading, there's a Google Doc that exists with that book, and whatever's sticking out to me, I'm typing that the notes in Google Docs. Mm-hmm. Then I got a doc that I use every day where I'm putting one sentence like a high point from all those four areas, and a couple of times a day, in the middle of the day today, I'll pause, I'll read back over that, because that's the high points of what I read this morning, yep. and then before I go to bed tonight, I'll do the same thing. Hmm. So let's say two years from now, if I read something in a book I want to revisit, I don't have to find a book and look for what I highlighted. Right. Yes. I go right to the Google Docs because I typed up the stuff that impacted me the most. Mm-hmm. So it's... I don't, I don't know if I read more. Mm-hmm. I just think I got a strategy to help me retain better. That's a strong one, too, because I definitely do that. I'll, I'll go to my notepad, and it's like stuff all over the place. It's yeah. not organized. It's yeah. organized to me, but sometimes I can't find stuff. I think so. people like us have to have what I call an information management system. Yeah. You yep. got, it, you know, it, it's, it's simple. I mean, it's, it could be a little, it's simple, and it could be a little aggravating, but it organize information like medicine. Mm-hmm. You don't need it all the time. But when you need it, you need to know where to find it. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, yeah. so my stuff is set up in folders and categories and all that. <laughs> and I am yeah. not like organized person like yeah. that at all. But it's yeah. like uh, 
I, I don't like to be organized, but I like to win. Yeah. So I'll be organized because I want to win. Wow. You know, we've all been told that your net work equals your net worth. And in all my years in entrepreneurship, I've never seen anybody really teach it. You know, a lot of times people look at me and they look at my circle of friends, they look at my circle of mentors, they look at the people that I'm around. They're like, man, how did you go about building that network? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a skill set that has to be developed. And I literally put something together to teach you how to be able to make the climb as an entrepreneur, as a leader, or someone that's just trying to grow in their influence. Somebody that wants to grow their, their community, their leadership, their income, their mindset, or their brand. Check the link in the description so you can get access to that course and start learning the skills necessary today. How do I attract the people, grab the influence, and grow my brand, scale my personality so I can get the results that I want? All of that's there. Click the link in the description for more details and get access to it today. That's deep. Look, we, we've talked about this before. I want to get your thoughts on camera. Leadership is so important, mm -hmm. but it's an area that a lot of entrepreneurs I've noticed, they don't even pay attention to. It's like you just get talking about leadership. They be like, oh, God. Until they get to, like, I feel like the the multiple, like, I feel like you can potentially get to six figures without leadership. But multiple six, seven, multiple seven is where you realize that's a, a, a huge component. Definitely multiple seven. I think you can go crazy and kill yourself for a year and get to seven. Yeah, but yeah, to keep but I, it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one, you're going to borderline kill yourself, <laughs> right? You have no life. Yeah, yeah. But that's the difference, you know what I mean, between, yeah. like, that's an entrepreneur. That's that's a person really graduating from a solopreneur to an entrepreneur. Because yeah. entrepreneurship, I think what we call entrepreneurship a lot right now is, like, uh, working for self yeah. and solopreneurship. Yeah. It's not the same thing. It's not. Entrepreneurship in and of itself speaks to their, like, some... Like we talked about this about mm -hmm. leadership, that like some core competencies and skills yeah. that are part of it, mm -hmm. and and leadership is one of them. Solopreneur is going to do the work of ten people. Mm -hmm. The entrepreneur, that's a leader, is going to put ten people to work. Yep, it's completely different. Totally different. And because and what scares me sometimes, I hear people like, "Yo, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to have a business." But like, man, I just I, I, I can't deal with people. Two people too much. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. bro, like the stuff you complain about, it ain't going nowhere. It's, right. it's, it's probably going to get worse. Sure. And so people are like, oh, I don't like people. I don't want to mess with people. I want to do something where I don't need people. I'm like, I don't know too much you can do where you're not going to need people because money comes from people. Yeah. So if you don't get good <laughs> with people, it's going to be very hard for you to consistently make money mm -hmm. long term. Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, that's something that a lot of people need to dive into um, a lot earlier. What, what made you realize for yourself that leadership was an important thing to study? I'm going to say burnout. Yeah. Yeah, burnout. I, I think um, started experiencing some fruit, some success in different areas mm -hmm. and was doing the work of 10 people and yeah. just really tapped out, man. I had a, I think I told this story a couple of times. I looked up one time, I had a, a like a, a panic attack and just was wow. overwhelmed. It was yeah. just, you know what I mean, too much. And it wasn't, it wasn't, I call it good stress. It wasn't bad stress. It wasn't yeah. because I had so much that was falling apart. It was so much was going well mm -hmm. and I didn't have I didn't realize that it's a skill that you need to develop yeah to actually <laughs> you know discover <laughs> develop and de deploy teams which yeah. is at its core what you're doing when you're leading um I didn't know that and so um I got to the point where I said I'm gonna have to learn how to do this differently or I'm gonna have to stop doing this yeah and I think that's where a lot of people start what they start what they don't realize is this the stress or the anxiety they're feeling is a symptom of the fact they need to grow as a leader. A hundred percent. And so they say, "Is ah, oh, this is too much. I need to quit." When you're especially right. pe especially people of faith. Yeah. Because what happens is, I had a good prayer life, and I still had that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like prayer about it. I, was like, I already had a good yeah. prayer life. It was like I needed leadership skill. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that is what gave me peace That's in that area. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and so it's like it's like diving into it, like you said. Like a lot of people quit because of lack of leadership. It took me a long time in business to realize that because when I first got started, I was like, I had um I started network marketing and then I had a sales company and everything came back to the same thing. It was like, man, I just rather do this myself because mm -hmm. it's too much to be dealing with people. And that's when I was younger. That's when I was like 18 to like maybe 22. And then right right before 23, I was like, okay, you know what, Justin? You keep you just saying that because you're not good at it. Yeah. You're saying, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to work with people because you, you suck at it right yeah. now. That's, yeah. that's really what, like I had to, it was like an honest conversation with myself. Like, because if anything you're good at, 
you want to do more of it. Facts. And so if you get more skilled at it, well, maybe you would actually start to enjoy some of these other areas versus saying, oh, no, that's not it. And then, I, and then what was happening for me there is, is I was hopping around from business to business or a thing to thing to try to figure out something that would work. And I was like, I would always reach the level where I had to be a better leader, mm-hmm. whether it was to myself or to other people. And that's why I'd be like, oh, okay, nah, I'm out of here because it's mm-hmm. too much. So, yeah, and I agree with you a thousand percent, bro. That's uh, So where, where would a person start? Like, where... When you're looking at people and you're like, man, get working in leadership, where, where, where would you have most people start? I, most of them, I would have most people start with, with leadership theory. Yeah. So that's going to be like, you need to understand like the theory of it. Like you can't, you can't do it right if you understand it wrong. Yeah. It's like teaching somebody to ride a bike. You don't know what a bike is yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Fact, yeah. yeah. So what I mean by that is, you know, the first thing I'll probably do is probably say, hey, uh, we need to develop your understanding of leadership first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be primarily probably about three things, real simple. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a couple of books I'm going to recommend to you. Yeah. It's going to be a couple of podcasts I'm going to recommend to you. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a YouTube, some YouTube videos I'm yeah. going to recommend to you. Yeah. That's probably where I'm going to start to get them kind of a basic yeah. understanding and get their head wrapped around what it actually is. Because yeah. most, a lot of people are acting out of their assumptions. Yeah. And uh, they're not getting the results that they want because yeah, no, <laughs> it's like so. you're not doing what you think you're doing. You're doing that. You calling it leadership? That don't make it leadership. I got this little small, uh, little small dog. It's like a multi poo mixed mm-hmm. with some other stuff. Exactly some shishu in him, yeah. Rocky. Yeah, so I got this little small dog, and it's like I can call him a killer. Yeah, get him killer. <laughs> it's not a killer. Bro. <laughs> and sometimes I got, I'm leading. It's yeah. like no, you're not yeah. actually. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. All right. We gonna talk about style because you you're a very stylish brother. You know what I'm saying? You one of the first. What was that shirt? I actually bought like two of them with the straps on it. They, uh, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. What, is, yeah, what, what yeah. brand is that though? Yeah, uh, McQueen. I, yeah, McQueen, Alexander McQueen. Yeah. But every time I see you, man, you they, what is what does the style come from? Is that? It's not me. Okay. I am not. I, would, <laughs> I, I am not at all. I am not at all. It is my, in part, is my wife. Mm-hmm. Um. And then there are just now at this point there are other people around me mm-hmm. that just kind of help me with that. But yeah. I don't like the shop. Mm-hmm. I'm like re- unless it's Christmas or something like that. Yeah, I'm not in the malls. Yeah, yeah. yeah I so, think the malls is not. A- I, I I do look I do look I do like to look nice though, not as an issue of of vanity but of value. See, your appearance is a nonverbal communicator. Yeah, it is. It's when you walk in, your appearance speaks. It does. It says something. Mm-hmm. And so I do value it. I'm just not good at it. Yeah. I can't I can't put it together. I think I asked you one time, I was like, yo, who designs the the, yeah, uh, the, 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 the shirts stuff, and all that stuff. stuff? And you were like, I do. I was like, no, 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 no. I mean, like, who come up with the ideas for it? <laughs> you were like, me. I'm like, nah, no, no, no. Like, you know, somebody draw it out and you was like me. I was like, man, I hate you, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know, I think, man, I think that comes from like that time you talk about the rest, that, you know, the you know, some stuff stuff here. I'm like, oh, that would be fly. I get a lot of rest, yeah. and I never get any ideas <laughs> like that. So it's, you know, it's, not it's the same a creative thing. gift. You have it. We both have it. You know, it's just, yeah, just different, different ways, different ways, different ways. ways. Yeah. 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 Like, so like I value appearance because it's a nonverbal communicator. Mm-hmm. I just recognize I'm not good at it, so I use my leadership skill yeah. to delegate that to other people, and uh, they help me with stuff, and uh, I pick. What I like, what I think is appropriate, and then yeah. put it all. I agree with that a thousand percent. Because even like uh, like young entrepreneurs I talk to, because one of the first things a lot of people want to get is like you know the car, and I'm like the car is fly. Like you get mm-hmm. a car, it's, it's it's almost the same thing. It's the indirect communicators like yeah. Because the good thing about cars, for the most part, you can't really bootleg them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you <laughs> you, it's kind of hard to get a bootleg, you know, Lamborghini. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, it's yeah right. Probably, maybe it's a way to do it. I yeah. don't if there is. I don't know how to do it. You know, on that level, but. A lot of times people look at stuff like that and they're like, yeah, but people don't see you getting out of the car all the time. Yeah. People, like, especially, I know for me being young and black when I was younger, it was like I knew people would look at me and they would try to, they would be looking for reasons not to do business with me. And sometimes it was the way I was dressed. Yeah. It's like, okay, all right, let me see what this man got going. Mm-hmm. Let me see how he, he's, he's, he keeps himself up. How does mm-hmm. he, you know, how, and, that, and that's when I started, because people, they would never see me like this. So I was always in a suit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, okay, I have to eliminate people being able to prejudge me off of my dress. Yeah. So let me just be as professional as possible. Um, and so I think dress, like, cause that's a part of your brand, how you look, yeah. how you hold yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, man, you can't, you can, but in my opinion, it's like, you should just show up. Like I, every time I see you, you're fresh, even at the gym. I said, this brother, 
<laughs> Does this brother ever lay off? <laughs> it ain't the regular man. He got he bring out his workout gloves out the new bag. Like, oh, okay. All right, let me let me switch my stuff up, man. Yeah, that's 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 but, uh, that's all other people, man. Yeah, that's no, all other no. people. But I do. I, I have. I don't. There was a time where I didn't recognize, and I thought it was vanity, so I didn't recognize the importance of it. But you know, you mentioned the word brand, and for me, at least the way I approach it. You know, because everything I do, whether it's whatever space it's in, is helping people. It's like yeah. you, like mm -hmm. it's, it's helping people. And uh, I told you that, like when I came to your first, um, no, I told David that when I came to, I think we came to your event. Yeah, this event you know, yeah. And so he's showing me all these people whose lives. I said, you know, how people talk about how they like changing people's life, mm -hmm. but not really. Yeah. They like changing it. They just helping people feel better. Mm -hmm. I was like, y'all, changing people's lives. Mm -hmm. And I think. For me, what a brand does is it says, hey, I'm the answer to that problem. Yeah. Whatever that, that problem is. Mm -hmm. That's what if I'm hungry, McDonald's, I'm an answer to that yeah. problem. You know, hospital. If I'm sick, I'm the answer to that problem. And so that's the way I kind of look at it. And I think it's something we gotta take. Even if you're not good at it like me, you should still yeah. take it seriously. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, relationships and business is something I think is really uh something that people can kind of skip sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, because for some people, they, they value so money over relationships. And any you had a something go viral recently about that. We'll, we'll talk about mm -hmm. like money and stuff like that in just a second. But like relationships, anything that you've done in your life to help maintain them and grow them over time, because, you know, when I talk about Darius Daniels, it's, it's always good stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that tells me that's a, this is a person that number one cares about relationships, but you know, number two, they've got something consistently that works for them to be able to yeah. maintain them. I think on the, so one, yes, absolutely. I think re relationships are, are, are a huge priority. So they're a priority for me for life and business. Yep. One is a part of my faith. It's my faith should be expressed in the way that I'm treating people. Yeah. Right. So one is the spiritual value of mine. Then what I realized on the business side is, at least for me, it's different. I guess it's different for other people. But for me, everything people. Yeah. On the business side, everything is people. It is. The people that do graphics, people. Yeah. The edit videos, people. Yeah. My clients, people. The bank, mm -hmm. people. Bank ain't a bank. It's people making yeah. those decisions. You know what I mean? So everything is people. I'm like, man, so getting good with people mm -hmm. is, the, is the, not the equivalent, but a part of getting good with business. Yeah, I agree. So um, I just thought that was... I thought being good with people at first was like a personality trait. Yeah. Like you're, you're extrovert mm -hmm. or you're good with people. If you're an introvert, you're yeah. not. Then I realized, you know, I got around a bunch of extroverts sometimes and I'm like, they talk a lot, but they don't mean they're good with people. Yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, okay. Yeah, can you, you know? Yeah, I just know how to take over yeah, the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You ain't paying attention to everybody else <laughs> receiving what you're putting out. 100%. Yeah. So I learned, I was like, man, no, this is a interpersonal skill. It's a, it's a life skill. It's a skill you need to develop. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so I wrote a book on it, Relational mm -hmm. Intelligence. And um, so here's my mission in relationships. And so I don't even think it's like seven steps. I would encourage, I would encourage people to adopt this philosophy. Ask yourself the question after every interaction, are they feeling better about me since that interaction? Or are they feeling better about them? Mm. Yeah. Got me? So when I leave you, I don't want, my goal is not for you to feel great about me. Yeah. My goal is for you to feel great about you. And if you feel great about you, you're always going to want to be around me. Yeah. yeah. I was about to say, it's going. they feel great around you, they're going to feel great. <laughs> they feel great about themselves after leaving you, they're going to feel great about you. You're like, yeah, oh, yeah. I feel good. Every yeah. time I'm around you, <laughs> right. yeah. you just make me feel good. Yeah. You know? And, I, and that, that's, that's interesting in the world where that's not the thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thought is like, listen, let's talk. I want to talk about myself. I want yeah. to talk about what I got going on, what I'm doing. And what What do you think? Wh where did the shift happen for you to make that distinction? Like, okay, I got to start making people feel important. Man, now you're trying to get a little personal, bro. I think because <laughs> I feel like it really kind of started in my marriage, and then when I saw it in my marriage, I saw I saw it in a lot of other relationships. Got it. Because you know, I think part of it was my upbringing. So like, I grew up in a home where it was like it's major love, like. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great family, but it wasn't a lot of like expression. It yeah. wasn't yeah. touching, words and, no yeah, words, yeah. no whatever. So for me, I know it's possible to feel without expressing. You can feel love. Yep. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. I love my mom, my mom loved me, but mm -hmm. we didn't hug every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I know my dad loved me. I loved my dad. He didn't tell me he loved me every day. Right. So he felt it, but it wasn't expressed. And so it was, uh, yeah, like, I don't know, probably several years in my marriage, in my marriage where I realized my wife was feeling some things that was completely different than the way I felt. You know, she may have been feeling like, she wasn't a priority. I'm like, you're the most important thing in the world to me. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I learned, like, okay, yeah, I got to be intentional about developing this skill of making sure other people feel what I feel about them. Wow, that's deep. And then it just kind of translated over into everything that I was leading, our team members, yeah. um, now in business, our clients and customers, people that are in our masterminds or our programs. Yep, I want them to to feel what we feel about them. Yeah, that's big. Um, that's a big takeaway for, for marriage or relationships in general. Are, is there um, any other discoveries that you you made? How long have you been married? 21 years. Wow, definitely don't hear that. Too. <laughs> like, I started like, because my parents, they've been around like 40, you know, ranges, but it's not, it, you know, like, because there are, there are bumps and bruises in the relationships, I, I, I would assume, um, you know, and it takes time to get to where you all are today. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know, mm -hmm. but it any does. discoveries that you made along your all's process, um, maybe advice somebody gave you, just something like, okay, you know, this really helped us get through a season we were in. Yeah, uh, so I think it's just something we just kind of discover, and that is, it's like, it's no such thing as like a broken relationship. Mm -hmm. It's broken people. Hmm. A relationship is just a concept. It's not a thing. Yeah people make the relationship what it is. Mm -hmm. So once we got that revelation, it's like, yo, one of the best things we can do for our relationship is to commit to never stop growing as a person. Yeah. So by virtue of the fact that if I'm getting better, watch this spiritually, emotionally, mm -hmm. and relationally, if I'm getting better in those three areas, then it's gonna translate into um, our relationship getting better. Now. I know it's not a relationship podcast, bro, but I just want to throw this out, too, because I, I don't know if people understand how important this is. None of this stuff working, none of this stuff I'm talking about work if you pick wrong. Yeah. And some people don't think picking is a <laughs> <laughs> I, You can do every, you can, you can get a marriage coach, you can read every yeah. book, you can do everything. If you pick, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to have a good relationship with a bad pick. Yeah. So I think that's another discussion, but people need to, and most people are like picking emotionally. Yeah. There's no filter, no framework, no set of criteria. And it's like uh, they go through something, they go through a bad one. Okay, I know what I want now. Yeah. So now you're picking based off the opposite mm -hmm. of, of what you had. Yeah. And, and so, but you need, a, you need a framework for that. Mm -hmm. And because uh, it, it is just hard to have a good relationship with a bad pick. Wow. That's big. You know, I, I this is a, it's obviously a business podcast, but when I talk to a lot of people in business, most of them, like the ones that's doing what, well, it's going to come back to relationships. Like, man, the, for a lot of people, I can't speak for you. Money is easy. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yes, let me generate yeah. some money. Yeah, yeah. yeah All right, that's yeah. simple. I, at this point in my life, I know how to generate money. Yeah. But man, the relationship and keeping that together in the midst of handling all that—that's that's where. Well, it's this going is to what I'm challenge. saying. If you're married, a bad relationship can cost you half. Yeah. If you, don't, <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, like, if you don't think that affects your bottom line, yeah, yeah it go the wrong way, half. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I do think there is, there is a connection there. Mm -hmm. Now, when you got that Bezos kind yeah. of money, I guess it, it's, it's not, a, yeah. you know, not yeah. a big thing. Yeah. Well, you know what I, what, I, what I still took away from Jeff, though, is when, when he was going through his divorce, you go to Amazon.com, it was still there. Still there, yeah, strong. You know, a lot of people going through something in life, which is unfortunate, but it's like, yo, you, they disappear. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, yo, I'm sorry I couldn't ship my clothes to you. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. some stuff going on. <laughs> Sir, man. Yeah, I need my clothes. <laughs> we, either, either send me my money. Yeah, back, yeah, or yeah. Send me the clothes. Matter of yeah. fact, it took so long, you need to send me clothes <laughs> and my money back. Bad. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's, um, like, because at this point, like, you know, on the spiritual side, you also work with a lot of people mm -hmm. through relationships. Anything, any tools that, if people are going through a rough patch in their, their relationship can help them so that they don't necessarily feel like they have to disappear or they can kind of manage the relationship and still, you know, get through yeah, that. A hundred percent. I feel like if you're in a rough spot, man, a lot of times you don't need a book. Mm -hmm. uh, you need a coach. Hmm. You do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I think um, it's weird, man, how we've been conditioned to invest in what we put on us. Yeah. 
and not in what we put in us. Yeah, that's a fact. And so I just think, man, you, you know, you think about, yeah, that's yeah big, you think bro. about even an average couple, it's like, how much have y'all invested in the relationship? Yeah. Not the house, mm-hmm. not the wedding, not the clothes, yeah. but in y'all. So I think if someone's going through a rough patch, either together or individually, um, a coach will be really, really important. Really, really, I think, helpful, good support system and help you process some things. Yeah. What are, now this may be an off the wall question, but I just got it. I wonder your solution to it. Um, because you're happily married, uh, but I've, no, I've learned this world, people still gonna try. Mm-hmm. You know, and so like, what have you, are there some lines you've drawn with people and how you communicate relationship wise to just be very clear? Like, listen, I get this question a lot for some reason. <laughs> I do. I get it a lot. And people think they, they really think I'm capping when I when I answer the question. I'm so I'm shooting straight. I I rarely get tried. Mm. Rarely. Rarely. Yeah. Yeah. It's like but um that has to it has to be because of a way you handle yourself though. Maybe so. I don't know, but whatever it is they do. <laughs> like am, am I ugly or something? You know? <laughs> What's the, but no, seriously, I I I I rarely I rarely get tried. And yes, there are things that I put in place a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I think you need to make decisions in your time of strength that protect you from yourself in your time of weakness. So you don't know when you're going to be weak. Yeah. So you make decisions in your time of strength to protect yourself. And so uh, there's some stuff that I put in place to protect me from me a long time ago. And there are things I put in place to just like protect optics, like yeah. the brand, like how does it look? Mm-hmm. So there are just certain things that for me, you won't see me do it. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with them. Yeah. You just won't see me by myself at lunch with another woman that's not my wife. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Correct. People need to, they can have legitimate business, but the space that I'm in specifically spiritually yeah. is a little bit different. If I was just in the business space, it would be completely yeah, different. That's true. Yeah. But because I got my foot in that world, I got to take that into consideration. So um, when I'm traveling, uh, for the most part, I can't remember the last time I like traveled alone. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got a traveling assistant with me um, and he, they will always, if I'm in a hotel, they're going to ride the elevator to me, with me. They're going to walk me to my room. And then if I'm getting ready, if we're getting ready to leave, they're outside my room to away with me, walking me to my um, to my elevator. Yeah. That's just us just trying to, I want to protect our optics. Mm-hmm. So just think about this. I mean, you, you wouldn't think anything, but just think about this. You don't know me like you know me, yeah. hypothetically. Yeah. We're in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. You walking in a hotel, I'm getting off the elevator. It's me. And there's a woman on the elevator with me. Mm-hmm. Now you don't know me like you know me. <laughs> like, it hey. just it just looks yeah. It looks weird, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. so that's why we kind of do we kind of do those things. But I do that primarily for optics. But yeah, man, people don't they don't they don't try me. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good though. I, I even now like um, I feel like there's just things I've put in place with the opposite sex sex in general. Like I just don't reply at a certain time at night. Okay. Just to like, like, like for me, past ten o'clock, unless it's an emergency, like, you know, um, yeah, we're gonna talk tomorrow. Gotcha. You know, I've had people yeah. like, hey man, keep, I got a question. I'm like, okay, well, and in the morning I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What's up? Sure, I gonna help sure. you because I've I've learned that when you open those doors, they just they ten, thirteen, <laughs> like, eleven, thirty, twelve. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, we just we gonna just chill on stuff like that. Yeah. And I think it's important in business to have like. Just little things that you 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 willing to, to do and, and operate. And I'm glad you I'm, I'm glad you made because like the average person watching this is like, what does it have to do with business? Everything. Everything. Think about how much money people lose um, for things that have nothing to do with their lack of business acumen. Correct. Character stuff. Yeah. Character. Flow. It's like it's it costs you yeah. a bag. Athletes mm-hmm. and entertainers and businessmen and spiritual leaders, it's like, yo, sometimes it's not that you got a bad gift Mm -hmm. and that's going to mess up your bag. It's like you got bad character and you don't see how that's going to mess up your bag. Yeah, yeah. If you be be afraid the day that your income passes your character because yeah, it doesn't catch up soon, character, your development, it'll go back. It's going back. It's going to come back down. (laughs) Quickly. It'll be back down. And you know, and and if your character is bad, it's going to be even harder to build it than the first time. 
Mm-hmm. Because now you're going to have people talking about the other side of yeah. how you are as a person and, and, and checking around. And Because I literally, I remember I was at this uh, this dinner table and there was a couple like celebrities there and stuff like that. And I didn't know. They had just brought me around and invited mm-hmm. me. And they were like, we really we put you in that room because we knew it was a lot of people from the city in there. Mm-hmm. And we just wanted to see if anybody was going to say, you need to watch out for them. Wow. And I was like, and they said nobody did. So we knew you was a good person. Mm. But I was like, man, that crazy? Like That's imagine if it had just been a... A situation with somebody, hey. That's crazy. I don't know who invited my man over there. But. I'm going to tell you something else, though. Almost every significant, almost, not all, but almost every significant door that's ever opened for me, it, uh, somebody asked somebody else about me before they opened the door. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. almost the wise thing to do is to ask. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause that you, is true. Because <laughs> you, you talk about, you know, resources and money, and then also, more than that, in my opinion, i rather give you some money and the money go bad then make a b- bad connection relationship 100%, yeah and then that go bad yes. cause I can you know hey man alright yeah, the money investments happen things happen but man you, you had to do somebody that was crazy yeah. <laughs> why, why did you have him in my house yeah <laughs> you know exactly what I'm like that's bro yeah yeah, yeah no don't, br- don't bring nobody to my house that you wouldn't have and it's like you start you start realizing that stuff is really important which all goes back to to me the leadership part because before you can lead other people you gotta learn how to lead yourself first which comes down to how am I handling stuff? How am I care? How do how do you talk to yourself? Yeah, that's important because a lot of times what you talk to me, yourself is the way you talk to other people, if not worse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I feel like that yeah. the communication that you have with yourself, the example you have that you're setting with yourself. Now, you know, I always tell people like, look, if you can't follow yourself, why should other people? That's good. You yeah. know, <laughs> if you can't convince you to follow you, <laughs> <laughs> I was like this guy's people. Get, I literally, and you're a great speaker, so we're going to talk about this in a second, some tips on, on speaking. People are like, man, I want to be a motivational speaker, man. You got any tips? I'm like, yes. Motivate yourself to go do something. Because mm. at this day and age, 2022, yeah. 2023, why uh, why do I need to listen to you just because you can speak well? Yeah. You, Because in in a sense, in my, and this is my thoughts, you, you tell me, everybody, like I said, there's nothing new under the sun. So I was like, People read books, they get like inspiration from different places, and then you know everybody puts their interpretation and things on on that. But what makes the information more valuable is the results that a person, the fruits that they have in their life. Yeah. Like I listen, you're a great speaker, but I'm like also the man has some fruits. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's evidence that what he's talking about is actually working. Yeah. And if you got the the lines or the bars that go with it, but there's no fruit, I'm like okay. Yeah. This ain't the person I need to listen to. Hundred percent. Um. How have you developed your speaking ability? Because it's on a whole nother level. Um, one reps. Yeah, I'm gonna say that that's gonna be the first thing. Mm-hmm. And I didn't wait to get opportunities before I got reps. I think okay. that that was the difference. I didn't wait to get opportunities before I got reps. And so I would be writing um, talks. Okay. Um, I, I was 19 writing them. Didn't have anybody speak them. <laughs> to speak yeah. to. <laughs> Were you nervous or scared uh, of it, or just just the opportunity wasn't there? Yeah, opportunity just wasn't there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't. Opportunities weren't there, and but what I did, I didn't wait until opportunities to get practicing. Yeah. So, bro, I was just speaking in my room and yeah. speaking outside and speaking in the car, and mm-hmm. um, and so I think more than anything for me, it was reps, and I think um, if I had a coach, I could have got further faster yeah i agree i could have got further a lot faster Mm -hmm. oh my gosh um uh because i think that's one of the greatest gifts of a cultural mentor they give you speed yeah they take a take what they learn in decades they give to you in a day Mm -hmm. you know and so i think for me i would have got further faster there but reps i think were are, are important humility yeah yeah, because um, nobody can teach you anything if you already think you know everything. Yeah. So you you can't a lot of people can't improve because they're they're arrogant. So I think you know I always want to say, hey, I know I can get better. How can I learn? How can I more? Uh, how can I learn? How can I grow? I listened to great speakers. Yeah. And uh, I watched great speakers. Yeah. Of all types, mm-hmm. like so I probably learned from a comedian. Before I was about to say, yeah more than anybody else, how to hold a room. Yeah, keep people's attention. They can hold a room. <laughs> it's like an art. They'll talk about something and then come back to something everybody can clap about. Yeah. And then go someplace else and then come back. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's, and I learned, I learned body language from comedians. 
Because hmm. most of your typical speaking programs are teaching you things about body language that the greatest speakers in the world ignore. Yeah. You know, it's weird. It's like the experts that teach you, you know, don't be distracted, keep your hands in. I'm like, the people that's filling arenas are, are not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I learned from comedians, everything communicates. Yeah. So there are facial expressions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That Kevin Hart, yeah. that me, yeah, yeah, all of that is he, he's speaking, he's yeah. communicating. So mm -hmm. everything communicates. So I learned not just from listening to great speakers, but watching them. And I learned a lot from comedians. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually my favorite people to watch, the, the way they start out. Cause like you know they always start they always have to start out a certain way to yeah. get people's attention from the yeah. beginning. Um, it was something you said about coaching because it's really important because I know you got a, a few coaching programs you even help people mm -hmm. with, with speaking. And it was it was a quote I can't remember exactly what it said but it was like it was almost like coaching or it was like wisdom when you're when you're paying for somebody for coaching or for their wisdom what you're paying for is somebody else's pain. Yes. And so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like I'm not like yes there's. You know, it's great. Justin is great, but it's like, what I'm, what you're really paying for is this the, all this pain that I had to go through. You ain't have to go through that if you just. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. this thing is, you don't have to, but then you just you just go through it. Yeah. And he was like, "Dang, I wish I would have uh, invested into that." Because like having somebody that I even had somebody help me with uh, with speaking, I, um, and one of the, it was actually a simple thing that he gave me, and it was just, "Hey, just know how you're gonna end." Mm. And I was like. Cause that's what I was always. That's why I would be rambling. Cause I was mm -hmm. like, he was like, just you always just, just know your exit. He was like, listen, we'll work on your intro. Yeah. He's like, every time you go on stage, know how you get off. Yeah. Because most people, they either don't start well, or they go too far on the end. Mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, this could have been over ten minutes ago. You oversaw your ending. So he was yeah. like, always have, always have an ending. And which so what you said about the practicing before time. That's the tip for everybody's watching. Cause mm -hmm. you don't need an audience to do that. Matter of fact. We ain't talking to nobody in here. It's talking to us. You know what I'm <laughs> but it's like it's. But but now I guess what you you can put it out. You know. There, there's... I'm gonna tell you some jail too. And it's best to to practice. Of course you got to practice with people. But it's best to start by yourself. Yeah. Cause now you got people who are like practicing going live. Yeah. It's like, let's get some reps in before we go live. You know. You know what they say is, well, I don't like listening to myself. I don't like it. <laughs> Ma'am, sir. <laughs> So you don't like listening to you, but other people are gonna like listening. You want to little people go through this? No, man, no, that ain't it. It gets worse, be man. I like you ever you be on somebody live, they go in and be like one person on it. I'm like, hey, man, we gotta keep, keep the reps in, man. You know, keep, keep the reps in. Yeah, get the reps you in. Know? Um, that's important too, though. I think because sometimes the people that you know, even for me, when I wanted to be speaking, it was like, hey, man, put you put me in front of your audience. I'm like, mm -hmm. bro, I need to see. It's almost like you're just talking about a relationship. It's like before I put you in front of somebody, I need to make sure you know what you're doing. Because yeah. one thing I learned about and from businesses, once you expose somebody to someone, you can never unexpose them. That's right. Yeah. So I've got to be very careful. Like, I've, right I've here, learned that. I've yeah. learned that. <laughs> like this, this year. Show? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this this year, I've learned that. I didn't know. I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't ready. Yeah, yeah. I didn't understand. Yeah, I get it. Like now at this point, that's why I'd be very. I'm very careful about who. Anytime somebody's in front of, you know my audience and network because yeah. I can never unintroduce you. Like, you know, hey, forget the fact that I showed that person to you. No, <laughs> it's there. And not everybody has the right intentions or, you know, right. and, and obviously I'm not worried about like, I, I don't feel like anybody can take anything from somebody, but I'm just very particular about who I just put in front of. Oh, I get it. The people that, you know, I serve. I completely and work with. get it. Yeah. 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 Um, what's been your, your biggest leadership pain that you had to learn? And grow through. You got a you got a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know if there's one that like ranks up head and shoulders above the rest, but there there's like um there's one that kind of that's kind of coming in my mind. And uh, some people may not even think that this is that is pain, but I think probably mine has been disappointment. Yeah. And I don't know if well, I'm sure you do, but I don't know if a lot of people know what it feels like to really take your time invest and throw yourself mm -hmm. into a person, yeah. you know, for the purpose of developing them and, you know, making their life better and them making the organization better, et cetera. But it can be very discouraging, disorient to throw yourself into developing people mm -hmm. only to realize you want them to grow mm -hmm. more than they want to grow. Yeah. 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 So like I actually even developed a training on that. Hmm. Like I, 
it was affecting me so much. I developed this whole training, this teach. I think it's my most, most viewed thing on YouTube. Five types of people you can't help. Wow. Right. Yeah. All right, we're going we're gonna to throw that yeah. one in the show notes, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> five types about? of people you can't. I, I, I saw that. So that, that's probably leadership-wise been, been my greatest thing. Yeah. 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 That's, it's a tough one. Because when you first get started as a leader, you want to take everybody. You want to change everybody's life. I mean, and I'll take you. I can change your life. Yeah. Nah. But You're going to be misunderstood and criticize and all that kind of stuff but that's kind of it's kind of quick you know what i mean somebody yeah. say something it's thing you for a day mm -hmm. you wake up the next day you forgot about it yeah yeah but yeah. once you pour yeah time money res like resources into it mm -hmm. yeah those those are the ones that, that are painful yeah and i think um i know one thing that's kind of helped me now is like i always i people have to people have to show they gotta show me more before i put in a lot of time good. energy and efforts it's like okay i i and and it's not even your words. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, kind of, it's like the reverse side when it, for me in business. I don't need the words. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't need the words. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do it. Go, go do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Matter great fact, with that. The more you tell me, the more I get concerned. <laughs> because the people that talk the most, a lot of times, do the least. Yeah. But for me, it's like, okay, I'll meet you. i actually meet you past where you are, but you've got to show. And uh, and what I've learned is for that, for when I do that, you still make some investments that may not be the best, you know, but um, I've had less mistakes mm -hmm. because the trap is what you said is when I want you to win more than what you want me to, mm -hmm. then I want you to win. And then what happened for me, and I don't know if it was for you, it wasn't even necessarily that they didn't want to win. I just liked them better. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. it was the people that was yeah. like, I just like you. So yeah. I want you to win because yes. I like you. Yeah. And I like the other people too. It was just like, you know, there's some people you just connect with. You're like, okay. I really like this person. Let's go win. It's like, nah, this person's actually showing mm -hmm. that they they should be the person that deserves it off of what they've done from what we've been given. And so I just had to get past the uh, personalities that I am fond of versus the ones that, you know, I had to develop a little bit more. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, I get it, though. That, yeah. that can be that can be entitlement is one, too, that, that I think a lot of leaders are dealing with now. Yeah, that can be, I think that's more of an irritant yeah. to me than like painful. It's just like, just kind of irks me a little bit, the, yeah. the it, entitlement. It, you, what do you feel like that comes from? I don't know, man. I hadn't cracked a code on that yet. Yeah. But I'm talking to a lot of leaders who feel like that they're dealing with that with their team. And I'm talking to a lot of people that feel like they're dealing with that with their, I mean, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs that feel like they're dealing with that with their clients. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to a lot of people that feel like they're dealing with that in their relationships. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you are obligated to do for me what I think you should do for me. And the moment you don't do for me what I think you should do for me, I'm gonna respond to you like you hurt me. Mm. Like you mishandled me, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah. You know you know what I wonder if, if we're starting to see the result of the generation of schools that get re rewards for everything. Cause you yeah. know, like when I was in school, it was first, second, third. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's it. Like, honor roll, perfect attendance, for, you know, like, yeah. and now it's like, like when I go to my door to school, I'm like, this one is for Johnny because he tried hard. And this one is for Susie because she tried really, really hard. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, they all know life don't work like this. It does not. But I, I'm see, I, I am seeing that in entrepreneurship. People are like, oh, man, I've been doing this business for a year. I'm like, <laughs> Congratulations! If you was in college yeah. for a year, what would you have done? But what, exactly. what would you have by now? Yeah, yeah. If, if you were, matter of fact, if you was in college for four years but you was failing all the classes, what would you have now? Right. So I almost feel like there needs to be a score or something like we. It almost needs to be like a grading scale for like an entrepreneur, like maybe like a test. You can be like, hey, year one, did you make this much? You do this, mm -hmm. and if mm -hmm. not, you. You, you pass that year with the C. You know what I'm saying? So don't expect to be at the top of your class. You know what I mean? It's, but it's got to be something where it's like, because uh, I feel like entrepreneurs not tracked. It's just, hey, I've been doing this for four years. Mm -hmm. Well, let's break down the four years. Was you starting and quitting in the four years? Was you? That's right. You know, like. Were you learning? Were you getting better? Yeah. yeah were, were you showing up? Were you, you know, like you said, investing in yourself? Yeah. And if you weren't, well, then that, that's a different four years from somebody that's been doing all those things. Sure. You know, so. Yeah, entitlement is huge, and and I'm, I'm uh, it's gonna be interesting how you know I think social media helps with it too, because like sometimes you can see those exceptions where people just blow up. You normalize it. You think yeah, that's normal. That's but yeah. I, and I'm like, anytime that happens, I'm like, people. That's why it's not. That's why it's 
a big deal because yeah. it don't normally happen yeah. that way. It's not normal. Like most people's story are the ones that's just the regular. Hey man, I was doing this for a long time, and you know, obviously, you don't want it to take forever. That's why coaching is important. Because mm-hmm. if you apply it, if you apply it, it can change the game. Uh, but yeah, man, yeah, entitlement is uh, entitlement is huge. I'm trying to think of anything else I've seen um, with people. Is uh, yeah, you got people. You know, the disappointment piece from underperforming. You got entitlement. Yeah, you got betrayal. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one. Let me let me ask you this because this this I think this is this is fitting, right? Because what I've seen is, I'm trying to figure out the best way to word this. It's learning how to treat people on their exit. That's just just something I've been thinking about because like even in your space, um, especially spiritually, at some point there's gonna be somebody that's working with you that wants to go off and do their thing. Mm -hmm. Like how do you, how do you say, okay, I'm going to communicate and develop people and work with them, but be okay with them leaving and then when they leave, I don't have to destroy them. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So (laughs) I'm gonna tell you what I've been doing is long enough to, I think my experience has shaped my mindset and my approach to this because I used to be frustrated. Yeah. And what I found is this, frustration is when you find something that you don't want and you didn't expect, or you get frustrated when you didn't find something that you did want <laughs> and you <laughs> did expect, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So, so I'm like, okay, if I can adjust my expectations, mm-hmm. it's gonna minimize my frustration. Yeah. And so for me, Here's my assumption. If I am doing my job well as a leader, Mm -hmm. most of the people that come to me are going to go out. They're going to be developed in a way where they're going to go out and want to develop other people. So I just shifted my expect. So now, Hmm. now it is my expectation that someone's going to want to go off and do their own thing. And the approach, the mindset I'm going to have toward it is, this means to a degree I did my job. Yeah. Now, do I think that everybody that does do that should? That everybody goes out and does it? Do I think that they should or equipped for it or yeah. gifted for it? No. Yeah. Um, some people, it's ambition, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> they don't have the ability, but yeah. it's ambition. But in either case, um, I've just learned, here's my philosophy. If I am good to people, mm-hmm. God will always send me good people. Wow. So when you go out, Somebody else is gonna come in. Yeah. If I'm good to you as you leave, he's gonna send somebody good to me. As um, and uh, it's tough, man, because there are times where people leave, and when people leave, they never tell the whole story. <laughs> they don't tell the part that makes they them look good. They don't. T- they only tell the part that makes them look good. And the, the part is, is when they do that, you still got to be upstanding. But you be like, hundred <laughs> percent. Like if I told her everything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I get that. Uh. Last couple questions. What favorite book in the Bible and why? Favorite one, um, Joshua probably. Okay. And it's because I can relate. I relate to him personality wise. Moses is more diplomatic. Yeah. And political. Joshua is not. He's yeah. very matter of fact. He is assertive. He's aggressive. He's like, y'all with it or not? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I so I, that, yeah. I resonate with that, yeah. with with him and his character type and his and his personality. And as a yeah, so I think that that's yeah, it's my favorite. Yeah, I like that. That's that's the first time I heard the answer too. Yeah, like that. that's why I figured I would get something different. From <laughs> yeah. I like that. Like yeah, that. I always have a section in the show. Where it's called breakdown of breakthroughs. Okay. So we talk about any flops, failures, fumbles that you've had mm-hmm. um, that have caused you to have a breakthrough. Because a lot of times, you know, if somebody's struggling right now, they broke down. Hundred um, percent. But that breakdown, if you take the lessons from it, learn from it, can can be the catapult to your next breakthrough. You have anything like that you want to share? Absolutely. I yeah. went through one this year. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I think it was January. I did my first challenge, uh-huh. which was rock the world with words mm-hmm. and. Successful challenge. You and I talked a little bit about the challenge, right? So not too long after that, maybe a few months later, uh, I did an event, Power Success. uh, Tony Robbins was headlining, Mm -hmm. right? Okay, so with my challenge, added value to people, opened up my program, pitched my offer, whatever, online. Mm -hmm. Went fine. Yeah. Pretty successful. I go on stage. Mm Mm-hmm do my thing on the stage that I like did online at the Tony Robbins event. 
pitched one. Mm. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't laughing at you. Ain't but go. I got like one person took the offer. Yeah. One person took the offer. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. It was in an arena. Now, the arena wasn't full, mind you, but mm. it was still an arena. Yeah. And there was enough people in there. Yeah. One person took the offer. And I went back and I said, you know what? Speaking online mm-hmm. is not the same yeah. as speaking on stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, so people say, don't you speak in the spiritual space every week? Complete. This is... That is completely different Correct, yeah. than speaking in these other environments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is It is not the same. So I've been speaking almost all my life in spiritual spaces. But when I start transitioning to these other environments, I'm like, yo, this is not it's not the same. You can't do yeah. at this event what you're doing. So that was a breakdown. So I saw one. It was so it was so embarrassing. It was funny. Like, I can believe it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 If I've been broke, I'd have been sad. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's where the borderline tears about to come out. Like, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe this. Yeah. But what did that do? That led me to this year get in coaching mm-hmm. and investing in programs to help me learn how to speak on a stage mm. in that environment. Yeah. So let's fast forward to my Thrive event. Yeah. That uh, where you came and spoke to my mastermind. Mm-hmm. Well, that event, spoke on the stage, used this new framework I learned, mm-hmm. pitched, completely different result. Wow. So Love that it. is a breakdown that led me to an awareness that I need to do some work. I did the work, learned the lessons, and it produced a breakthrough. Yeah. So yeah. that selling one, yeah. I think, was one of the greatest things that happened to me. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's so powerful. I hope y'all got the formula for that. It's like, it's not just like, let me just be sad about this breakdown. Yeah. It's like, no, nah, something's wrong here. Right. <laughs> so I realized, because some people could have left that, but oh man, I went to spoke in this group, man. The crowd was just, they right. just wasn't feeling it, man. I'm going to go do some worse. But no, all right. So I, I realized there was a problem, and then you went and searched out a solution. Mm-hmm. And it sounded like you invested into the solution. I did. Yeah, you said coaching, so I, I did. Figured, I figured that out did. comes with yeah. a, <laughs> a compensation. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. Yeah, so you paid for that, and then you, you had to go through something, then you would say, okay, you know, I'm going to come back and apply it again. And uh, I, what I would say is even if that one didn't go where, where you wanted, you would continue to do the same process until you got the result. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I love it, man. I really love that. Um, last last, last tip I always like to give financially. Any any financial tip you can give to an entrepreneur, like say, like that's really helped you when it comes to your finances? Um, This is going to sound like non-financial, mm-hmm. but I think it's it's, it's been the... It's been a great asset for me mm-hmm. and my family and even with our businesses, bro. And it's this. Um, I don't know how you can be financially healthy without being emotionally healthy. Hmm. Because how many people are emotionally impacts the decisions that they make financially. That's a fact. Yeah. Yeah, so purchases you make, people you invest in, people you won't stop investing in because they can't do the job, but emotionally you got this emotional attachment to them Mm -hmm. and you're saying you're continuing to compensate them because you want to help them when you're really protecting your own feelings because you don't want to feel bad about making a decision that you know is the right decision. So I feel like, um, man, some people can't fix their budget because they hadn't healed their heart. So uh, that's big. That's, that's, that's big. Yeah. That's yeah, what look, I say. Some of y'all need to fire some people. That's what I know. <laughs> <laughs> no. Get your heart right. Get your emotions right. No, no. That, that's that's real though. That, and that's that's what's so funny is that there's some people that they they're gonna hear this now, and in two years as they grow their business on another level, they're gonna hear that again, and it's going it's yeah, going it's definitely. gonna hit different. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. I learned that too. Some yeah. stuff you gotta grow into. Yeah. Yeah. No. For sure. I appreciate you coming uh, and really sharing because this is, this is I'm going to watch this again. Gyms, it really was. For sure, man. Um, I enjoyed it. We do anytime we come to the show, man. We always like do something. Yeah, yeah, I got my my stuff. A couple of things, man. So, got a couple of things. One of them I hope you like. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Um, so of course you know new ACOs. You got okay. Get yes, sir. Gear. The gear. Yeah. The gear. Yeah. Come on. Then this one, I'll explain it to you when you, you open it, but 
So that right I got there. plenty. I don't have the blue, though. Oh, good. I'm glad we chose my yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Right? I don't have and the blue. And then, uh, that, because I know you're into, like, I feel like you're into technology stuff. Yes, so, sir. I don't know if you've seen those. Those are the the, uh, the Facebook Ray-Bans. So those are the, I figure, like, from a speaking standpoint, it might be fly. Wow. So those are, like, the Ray-Bans that have the camera in it. So, Bro, okay, this fancy. <laughs> you know, most so, of the time you get a candle. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but you know, so I feel it might be dope for you know, maybe one time, and I don't, you know, maybe one day you wear some glasses yeah. and you can add a prescription into them. But it has cameras on it, so it'll connect to your phone, and then when you get done, it's literally like people can see and hear from the from the camera. My guy, so thank you, man. Absolutely, bro. Oh, man, you give me a candle or some peppermint. <laughs> Or some of that popcorn, yeah, yeah, the pop caramel popcorn. You <laughs> hear me over the gifts? You be like, oh man, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, this is a real gift, bro. No, thank no, you, man. No, you, you know, you took real time from your life, and you know, a lot of stuff you got going. So you know, we just like the sewing to people because you oh, sewed man. it to us. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Appreciate it, man. Um, where can people find you? Hey, everything is Darius Daniels with H. D H A R I U S Daniels. So that's. IG, TikTok, that's website. Yeah. The good thing about having a weird name is nobody got it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know what I mean? So I got everything, yeah, Darius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah, so definitely, definitely check them out. Um, content is on an entirely different level. Thank you, man. The wisdom in it is, uh, I always like, I always enjoy people when I don't hear the same information regurgitated. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like you definitely put Darius Daniels in everything you mm -hmm. do. So I appreciate that, man, and just continue to be an example for the community and people around. So. Yeah, man, we appreciate you coming through, bro. Thank you, good yeah. brother. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Well, listen, y'all, man, I hope y'all got a lot from this episode. I would go back through it, especially for the leaders. Like, if you're not a leader, that, then you're probably good. But everybody else, you wouldn't be here if you weren't. Go back through this and take notes again. I'm telling you, he gave a lot of gems uh, and a lot of plays that now you got to do is go run it. So see y'all on the next episode. What's going on? Listen, make sure you guys go to runtheplaystore.com. Get your official Run to Play gear. We talk about shirts, socks, jackets for everybody that's run to play all across the world. Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just want it all. Do you know what it's like? Every day fixing your feet.